Welcome back to another episode of the Todd Durkin Impact Show. Folks, today, you talk about impact, you talk about legacy, this one is going to blow your mind and set you on fire. F-I-Y-A-A-A-A, three exclamation points. My friend, you're going to hear from a gal named Jenny Schatzel. Yes, she is someone I met back in 2012 at a mentorship program that I put on. And her story is absolutely amazing. She actually wrote a book here during the pandemic in June 2020, same month that uh, the Get Your Mind Right book came out. Her book is called Breaking the Cycle. Free yourself from the story that's holding you back. And folks, this is not only a book that you must read. I read it in two nights, literally two nights I read it. And it's simple yet very profound. Jenny Schatzel is making uh, literally uh, impact all across the globe, not just in Santa Barbara, California, but literally across the globe. Check this out. I just want to give you this excerpt before we uh, join Jenny in conversation. This isn't a book where I'm going to tell you what to do with your life. Honestly, what to do with your life is up to you. What I'm going to tell you is a brutally honest story about my own life in case it might help you with yours. How I went from an insecure, self-sabotaging alcoholic with daddy issues, food issues, body issues, and self-worth issues to a successful, strong, confident business owner. I'm also going to share about how I became a powerful woman who took control of her life again. The chapters in this book are raw stories and examples from my life, my struggles and successes, and how I worked hard to change it all. My friends, you're going to laugh. You're going to cry literally like I did. And you're going to hear from one of the most amazing women that I know. Without further ado, let's head up to Santa Barbara, California and hear from the one and the only Jenny Schatzel. Jenny Schatzel is in the house. Jenny, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I am so excited to have you. Man, I don't even know where to start because my wife has been telling me for months, you got to have Jenny Schatzel on the show. She's such an awesome person. Uh, we go way back. Uh, it was, what, 2012 um, when you first came to uh, my mentorship program down in San Diego. And uh, that's when we first met. And man, I am so excited to talk about all of it because you just had a book come out here in 2020. I've devoured the book in two days, mind you. Two days I read the whole book, Jenny. It's awesome. Well, listen, folks, uh, just to give Jenny her proper due, I've got to just, I got to read uh, a, a little something about Jenny. Check this very special Wonder Woman out. Jenny Schatzel doesn't change body. She changes lives. She's a wellness and lifestyle guide who helps people feel good about themselves, her platform is about changing the conversation on self-worth, body image, and life perspective. She's created a hugely successful, life-changing changing Jenny Schatzel program. Her passion is empowering people to accept themselves, respect themselves, and love themselves in every aspect of their lives. Jenny has created a movement that challenges the way people see themselves. Her program is as much about health and wellness as it is about positivity, self-love, and letting go of the behaviors and negative thinking that stops us and limits our success. She's been featured in dozens of media outlets worldwide, has been given two, not one, but two TEDx talks that has audiences on their feet. She's been named the National Association of Women's Business Owners, Female Business Owner of the Year. She's the mom of twin girls. Yes, she's an inspiration example for men, women, families, and people worldwide. Through movement, media, and online programs, she's a driving new era of change with fitness, body image, and self-worth. Jenny helps people change the conversation about who they are, what they can do, and all they can be. Without further ado, Jenny Schatzel, I had to give you your due with that amazing bio. Gosh, incredible. I could leave right now. That was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh, did I really do that stuff? Well, are you talking about me? <laughs> well, I, I'm reading that out of your book because I literally read that book in two nights. It's so special. I'm going to encourage people at the end uh, to go deeper. Uh, and not just if you have sons or daughters, if you're a parent, but for anyone um, who's looking to be the best, their best self, it really is awesome. But I want to, before we go there, how, how do you describe yourself now? If, if someone came up to you in Santa Barbara, California said, so Jenny Schatzel, what do you do? How do you describe yourself, Jenny? Oh, I love that. Um, to be honest, I say, you know what? I help women feel good about themselves and I help people change the conversation. 
Mm. And they say change the conversation on what? And it's exactly what you just said on body image, on self-worth and the power of movement. And I believe movement, obviously, you know, physically and working out, but also how we move through life. And mm -hmm. so really helping and pushing people to move forward, to not let their fear stop them, to not let what they look like in their body stop them from doing the things that they want to do in this life. Yep. And now you were telling me before we got recording that the Jenny Schatzel program, uh, you rebranded amongst the pandemic. That's one of the things that you do. Can you explain kind of what you've done with the Jenny Schatzel program and your brick and mortar studio in Santa Barbara? Yeah, so we have a gym in Santa Barbara, and we've had it for now, ooh, I think about eight years. Um, and it actually, it was before the pandemic, but it was called the Jenny Schatzel program, and then we rebranded. And now it's called Bond Fitness. And Bond means, you know, we are so much of a community, much like yourself. We, when we started the gym, it was never about starting a gym. It was always about starting a community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we believe we are a place where people can come and feel, our number one rule is no judgment judgment of others, but more importantly, judgment of yourself. So it's a safe place for people to come and feel welcomed and not judged. And so for years, it was called the Jenny Schatzel program. And then about a year and a half to two years ago, we rebranded and bond means, you know, bond mind, body, and spirit bond with your body bond with the people around you bond with your trainer. And it's all about bonding together. Our tagline is we get fit together. And the idea was to expand and to really spread this movement within Santa Barbara, but outside of Santa Barbara. And then a pandemic happened. <laughs> and here we are. Well, one thing that I've noticed, because Melanie's like, you have to follow her on Instagram. So I immediately started following you. And oh my gosh, what a devout following you have of everyone, but women especially, because you cover all topics. And I even see you sometimes like you'll, you'll work out and you'll go eat a donut. Tell me about the whole, the whole like, just your philosophy, because the women I see on there just are so real and your authentic, genuine spirit literally comes through the screen. Tell me about that. And I like the how I can have a donut after I work out. What's that all oh, that about? means a lot. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you know, I, and just be, a, this is me. I'm a hundred percent transparent and authentic and raw. And I tell my story and I put myself out there and I've been in the fitness industry for 20 years and I, and I got into the fitness industry because of my own body issues, which mm -hmm. a lot of trainers do. And so for most of my life, I didn't love and appreciate and respect my body. It was never good enough. I followed every restrictive diet there was. I mean, for a long time when I started my business, it was all about weigh-ins and before and afters and restrictive diets. And what I found was Yes, people lost weight and yes, people changed their bodies, but it wasn't the core of their happiness. And so many think if I just lost this weight, if I just look like this person, then I'll be happy. You know, I heard time after time, if I just lost this last 10 pounds then I'd be happy. And the truth is, if you don't like the person you see in the mirror every day, you're never mm -hmm. going to be happy. And so it really, for me was about, I find it hard. Like every time I got to my goal weight, it was never enough. Like my stomach could yep. still be flatter, my arms. Yep. And so for me, it was this rewiring on, you have to change from the inside out, not from the outside in. And we're living so exterior that mm. I'm really trying to change this conversation for everyone mm. that it comes from within and that we have to do the work on the inside. If you don't love and respect and accept your body at 120 pounds, you know, I mean, excuse me, at 180 pounds, if you got down to 130, 140, probably you still wouldn't respect it. Yep. And so, you know, for a lot of people, and I tell this story a lot, cause I think we can all relate, but everybody's got that like picture of themselves, right? That picture that you look at maybe from 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And you're like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't believe I look at me. I looked amazing. But then you think about you at that time and you, you didn't think you looked amazing. Right. Right. And so it's like, it's this whole, we have to start really accepting and respecting the body that we have. And I believe that's where we can move forward in a healthy way. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that's why, and it's, this is, this is personal, but I'm going to ask anyway, over the pandemic, you rebranded bond fitness, bonding body, mind, and spirit and the Jenny Schatzel program. When you tap into your whispers and you feel your calling, do you feel that your calling is going deeper, that you're being led to, to impact more women on this exact message so that you have your brick and mortar in Santa Barbara 
And then you've got the Jenny Shatchel program that is like, you're feeling compelled and called to serve the greater universe with the messaging inside of you and your story. I hope you just caught on to that because a hundred percent. Yes. Thank you for asking that. Yes. A hundred percent. I do. No, I, I do like think, it. yeah, I do think, and you know, I do, I have the background in fitness and I lived it and I watched it and I believe, I believe in movement and I, but what I really believe is we need to heal our relationships with our body and mm -hmm. we need to heal our relationships with food. And so mm -hmm. many of us, again, I'm now I'm like going to take it a little step further is we are products of the way that we grew up, you know, and a lot. And, and I say the cha the conversations we have now need to be different than the ones that we heard growing up. Yeah. And, you know, if we're just like to quick veer off here, it's like, I'm a product of, you know, the eighties and like snack well cookies. Right. And my mom, like all these diets and like, they were in a green box. They were in a green, green box. box. I still remember. Yeah, they're snack well cookies. And my, you know, always been like, green. well, they're, they're low fat. So you can eat more. You know, I had all this like really disordered eating messaging. Yep. And so for a lot of my life, it was like all or nothing with food, all or nothing with working out, all or nothing with a lot of things in my life. And so um, just even untangling that for myself, mm. I realized the more work I do through that, the more I can help others. And truly, it's this conversation that, does have to start with the women because if we're not breaking these cycles, we're passing them on. Mm, mm. Jenny, I want to talk about your story and what you've overcome because I honestly probably got emotional four times reading your book in two nights. Melanie is literally devouring it as we speak right now. I'm going to fast forward in the book, but I am going to come back to the beginning because on page 110, I don't know if that was a mistake or, or is on purpose, but 110, 10 is my favorite number. 110, you talk about on 10 11, 2012, October 11, 2012. Um, check this out, folks. This chapter, by the way, um, is called Acknowledging the Problem. And then we're going to step back after this. I was caught in the cycle a million times over, but on October 11th, 2012, something changed. I thought rock bottom would be one big blow that would change my life completely. But as I shared early in my story, I hit a bunch of rock bottoms, four in the first chapter alone. The way I, I came to stop drinking altogether was through another life-changing aha moment. I was attending a seminar with one of my favorite trainers, Todd Durkin. He was talking about how so many people, especially fitness trainers, live double lives. He said, in the training world, trainers will tell people how to exercise, eat, and live a healthy life, yet they're the ones out every night over, over drinking and overeating. Then he spoke a quote that literally changed my life. In order to be a leader, you must be the example. On that day, it was like my pen just took over, and on the edge of the notebook on which I was taking notes, I wrote, 10. Oh, you're going to make me cry. I'm getting, I'm getting emotional. October 11, 2012, I'm an alcoholic. And I will not drink again. Jenny, I'm, I'm emotional again. But you show a picture of your notebook on 10, 11, 12 that you acknowledge for the first time that you were an alcoholic and that you weren't going to drink again. Talk about that because I can't talk right now. <laughs> yeah, like, whoo, wasn't ready to bring the chairs. <laughs> um, Man. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And folks, this is, by the way, a three and a half day mentorship that was not necessarily uh, just on fitness, right? When I talk about three and a half day mentorship, I talk about game changing things, but you never know in a, in a, in a class and I'm just letting, letting us both gather our thoughts is uh, who's there. There were probably 50 plus people. I still remember you, Jenny, by the way, because uh, <laughs> your energy really stood out. On tables. <laughs> yeah. But talk about that. I, I obviously didn't know you at that point. Um, no. And, you know, obviously I knew you and it was one of the first actually like self-development things I did. And I remember mm -hmm. I have a business partner and we were very early in our careers. We hadn't opened the gym yet. And, um, I remember calling him and saying, Hey, I, I mean, I was just, I loved you Todd. I mean, I still do. I love you. <laughs> so I, you know, I call my business partner and he's more of the business side. So he doesn't know everybody in the fitness world. And sure. anyway, so I said, Hey, there's this man, Todd Durkin, that I really look up to. I really respect. He's doing this business mentorship. And, you know, I'd really love to spend the money and I would love to go do this. And he was like, wow, you've never asked. Yeah, let's, yeah, go do it. And so um, it was, gosh, it was life-changing. And again, I, um, yeah, I, it was the first, 
I'd struggled with alcohol for a long time. And mm -hmm. I was kind of always this party girl and exactly what, like literally when you said that, I felt like you were talking to me because mm -hmm. here I was in the gym, you know, working my tail off from 5 a.m. to nine o'clock at night, you know, when you're first getting started and you're doing everything and, and, and I loved it and I was so passionate, but then I was binge drinking. I was blacked out drunk every weekend. I was, you know, hung over ordering pizza and laying on my couch all day and just not living my best life. And so when you said that something just inside me went off and I always rolled my eyes at people that said like, Oh, you have this aha moment and your life changes. And I'm like, that's never going to happen. And it, it happened when you said that I, I felt to my core, you were talking to me, but I also felt to my core, this isn't who I want to be anymore. This mm. is not my purpose in life. I am better than this. I am here to do more and give more. And that quote, in order to be a leader, you must be the example has literally changed my life. And even, I mean, think about that was, you know, 10, 11, 12. And I always say that's the date I got sober. And mm -hmm. now um, in 2017, I had kids and it has never been more relevant that in order to be a leader, you must be the example. And that is why I'm so passionate about we have to be the ones to break the cycle. We have to be the ones to change the conversation because kids don't do what we say, they do what we do. But it's not even if you have kids, you know, it's your brothers, it's your sisters. My dad was an alcoholic. And yeah. so I was living my dad's life. And from the point I met you, and then literally the name of the book is Breaking the Cycle. And there's just so many cycles that have to be broken. And on 10, 11, 12 with you was the beginning of my breaking the cycle. Mm. Wow. Powerful. You know, what's powerful about that is when you're speaking to somebody, you never even know sometimes what you're saying, how it's going to impact them. I didn't know that story, Jenny, until my wife, Melanie, who you know, shared that with me just a few months ago. And she heard you on a podcast, I guess, talking about the date and the mentorship experience. She goes, you know, Jenny Schatzel, did you know that you really impacted her life? I said, no, I really didn't. I mean, I know we visited your, your studio a few years ago. Um, but it's amazing how sometimes your words um, can really touch people. So all of us, we have to be careful of our words and what we say. But also, I don't just believe it was the words that impacted you that day. I believe that the environment that we all create also impacts people. Because, for example, a mentorship program or a retreat that we might host, I think the environment and the people in the room, the energy we uphold in a room, allows for the manifestation of change. And you pretty much invested everything that you had at that point. And then 100%. some with yes. $75 left you share in the book after that to open your business. But when you actually put yourself in an environment to, to foster change and allow that to happen, like you said, you didn't expect any aha moments in your life, but all of a sudden the walls were taken down. So I acknowledge you for that because that wasn't, although you heard my words, that was, that was you being in a place where you committed and invested in being and allowed that to actually cr be created. So kudos to you, because it was you that ultimately heard that and then took action on that. And not only your business partner, but also your husband, right? your future husband, where you shared, I'm an alcoholic um, and uh, you know, I, I need to make some changes. You share earlier on, I want to step back um, because in the beginning, you share a quote of the book, Breaking the Cycle. I highly rec recommend it, guys. But um, she talks about, Jenny talks about four times hitting rock bottom, four times. And then she shares this quote. Check this quote out. Every addiction arises from an unconscious refusal to face and move through one's own pain. Every addiction starts with pain and ends with pain. Whatever the substance you're addicted to, alcohol, food, legal or illegal drugs, a person you're using, uh, using something or someone to cover up your pain. That is why after the initial euphoria has passed, there's so much unhappiness and pain in addictions. They do not cause pain and unhappiness. They bring out the pain and unhappiness that's already in somebody. Every addiction does it. Every addiction reaches a point where it does not work for you anymore. And then you feel the pain more intensely than ever. And then she quotes Eckhart Tolle. Yes. And that is a powerful, powerful quote. Can you just talk about that? Because basically what you're saying is everyone's got something. Everyone's got something and we've got to deal with it. And you share exquisitely about that. Talk about that, please. Uh, yeah, thank you. That that quote hit me like a ton of bricks. And 
this is, this is the thing, you know, people will, they'll put their wall up and say, well, I don't have an issue with alcohol. So like, I can't relate to that. And it's mm. the story really is, is, you know, we all have something and it's something we're doing to numb ourselves out because we don't want to feel the feelings. We don't want to, we don't want to, I don't know, face our relationships, our work, our, we're, we're trying to numb ourselves out because once you take whatever it is that numbs you out away, you actually have to face your life. You actually have to feel your feelings. And so for a lot to be honest, Todd, after your seminar, which you brought up such a beautiful point is it was the first time I had truly invested in myself. It was mm. at that point, it was a lot of money for me. And it was the, and so I love that you made that point and just doing that investment and then having that commitment, I'm not going to drink anymore. Well, once I came home and took that away, I'm like, oh my gosh, now I got to like really face my life and who am I and where do I want to go? And then my food issues came up and then my body issues came up and I heard somebody say one time, new level, new devil. So every time you level up, <laughs> right, your issues come up and it's so true. And I'll be honest, and this sounds harsh, but it's a lot of times why people really don't make a permanent change because it's really difficult. Mm. And every time we level ourselves up, our insecurities come up, that negative voice comes up and we just want to numb out. And that's why we run back. And if you can be aware of that voice, if you can be aware of like, oh yeah, I'm leveling up. So this stuff's coming up. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to choose to not go back to what numbs me. And instead, I believe awareness is how we change. So we have to become aware of the problem. And once we become aware of it, then the road splits. And we can either say, I'm going back down that road or I'm going to choose to go down this other road. I can't get the smile off my face. New levels, new devils. It's so true though, right? It, it's so true. My son has a shirt, by the way, from the rock under armor of that exact quote, but here's why. Does he really? Yes, be yes, but, but here's why. Is because everyone looks at everyone else and they're like, they, they like, oh, I wish I had that. I wish yeah. I had that. You have no idea what devils are inside of them yes. that they're dealing with because everyone's got something. This that is-, is Exactly the message. And yeah. it's, you know, I mean, we all know comparison is the thief of joy. We've all heard that, but it is, and especially in this social media world and every, you know, think about what our kids are growing up in now. I mean, oh my gosh, could I, I couldn't even imagine having the amount of things in their face in high school. I mean, it's just crazy. So that was a sidebar, but um, you know, we are, and then we get into this comparison of like, well, they, they're doing yes. more, they've got it going on. They look better. And again, then those things come up and we choose a lot of times to go back to what feels comfortable. Yeah. It's way easier to sit on the couch at night and stuff your face. It's way, and that sounds, I don't mean that to sound rude, but you know, by numbing out by food, it, out, it, yeah. it's way easier to have a bottle of wine. It's way, it's way easier to do those things. Mm. And so I really believe it's when we become aware of, Oh yes, these are the choices I'm making. And I no longer want to live that way. We can start very smallly. We mean to, excuse me, we start very small. It has to be small, actionable tasks that we can take on a daily basis. And that's what I'm all about. I'm about keeping it real and, you know, making goals that are attainable. It's like my book. I believe my book reads the way I speak. It's an yeah. easy, quick read, right? Totally. It's, and I'm it's not, and I don't say that to be, I tell everyone, I'm like, you can read it in two hours, but that's what I wanted. Somebody, somebody wrote to me and said, you have no idea how much confidence you gave me because this is probably the first book I ever finished. Because it's yeah. easy to read. And that's what I wanted. I yeah. wanted people to actually read it. I want people to actually do the work and see like you have this ability to change. Well, it's not only easy to read, but you have three questions after each chapter that are very deep, intensive questions, simple questions, but deep if you actually take the time to answer those questions. So that if any of you are processing change in any, in any level, the small or big, uh, Jenny's questions at the end of each chapter really allow you to reflect. It's almost a form of journaling that allow you to go deep on this and make that transformation that is uh, necessary for most people's lives. Um, you shared earlier about your father was an alcoholic. Um, one of the stories that got me in the book was you as a young girl. And you talk about how kids between six and 12 are extremely impressionable. And I've got a 12 year old daughter. And you go into explicit detail how your father came home drunk one night and right there that started and what he said to you started your daddy issues. What, what can you, can you talk about that? What, what was that moment? What happened and how did that all of a sudden trigger something for the for, for a long time became an issue for you? Yeah. For most of my life. Um, 
I believe that we all have this moment in our lives, again, between six and 12, that happened. It was either something from our parents or the kid on the playground or your brother or sister, right. and it changes our story. And so my, and I believe this is the root of a lot of our issues. And so the book is about getting to the root of the issue and ideally changing the story. So for mine, I, you know, ever since I was a kid, I was an active athlete. I loved, you know, t-ball and soccer and all the things. And so um, my dad was the t-ball coach and one day he came home and he was, and I was so, and when you read the book, I ask people to kind of find their own story and you find it because every time I tell this story, I can see myself. Like I feel it. I'm take, I'm taken back to that moment. And so mm -hmm. I always say, this is how, you know, of the moment. Cause you literally feel it. And my moment was, I was six years old. My dad was my t-ball coach. I was all head to toe gear up, ready to go. And I was waiting and waiting and waiting. And then he comes home and he's too drunk to go to the game. And mm -hmm. so um, it was at that point I looked at him and I said, dad, let's go. And he said, well, your mom won't let me, but I knew mm -hmm. he was too drunk to go. And so mm -hmm. at that point I created the story that I, a little six-year-old girl, wasn't good enough for my dad to stay sober and take me to a base and come coach my game. So I wasn't good enough for him to want to spend time with. I wasn't good enough for him to stop drinking, wow. which, so the rest of my life, mm. I really, I was always chasing my dad's love. I was always chasing my dad's respect. I mean, men in general, always chasing my dad's respect, but here's the thing. This is the other thing I came to. You can't get something from someone who doesn't have it themselves. So it wasn't until I started doing this work that I really realized, like, I had to take a look. My dad didn't respect himself. My dad didn't love himself. My dad had a really hard childhood. His mother didn't show him love. His mother didn't give him attention. So he didn't know how to do it. And so I had to forgive that. I And to be honest, I had to give my dad his story back. So mm -hmm. literally what happened was I took on his story. And I mm -hmm. lived most of my life thinking I wasn't good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I always need to be doing better. And through doing this work, I was able to give him his story back and my mm. life has changed. Mm. Wow. Wow. Powerful. When you say most of your life, I know your father passed when he was 65. How old were you when he passed? Gosh, I'm really bad at years and dates. Uh, I, I want to say this change really came probably when I was, I'm 41, probably when I was like 35, 36. Okay. And on his deathbed, you said something to him that kind of relieved you from the burden of what happened for those years. Do you remember what that was? Because on page 41, you share it. Yeah, it was, you know, I was able, my dad ended up with dementia. And so he couldn't talk. He couldn't, I mean, it was, it was brutal. And, you know, he was in a nursing home. He, my, I'm from Minnesota, but I live in California. So, you know, I actually didn't get to see him that often. So I went back and I kind of knew it was going to be the last time I saw him. And so I brought him a cheeseburger I think from Burger King which was his favorite and I played some Beach Boys oh this is gonna make me cry and um uh you know my dad didn't move or talk and he was just laying in a bed and he I kind of tried to like feed him the burger and then I just whispered his, in his ear I think uh I mean I'm sure you have it right in front of, but you know I just said I forgive you I love you I know you did the best you could and I want you to know that I've broken the cycle. I am no longer an alcoholic. I no longer live my life based on what other people think. And I am now a changed woman and going to change it for my future. Mm. And at that moment, my dad actually squeezed my hand. Mm. Wow. That was the one last statement. Dad, I quit drinking. I no longer need the approval of other people. I realized I am enough. And I know I'm changing the dynamic of our family for the next generation. I was crying like a baby, Jenny, reading that. I was literally in bed. No, like, what's wrong? I'm like, you just have to read the book. <laughs> I'm like, you're going to read the book. All right, just read the book. Um, and, you know, that was even before. I mean, I wasn't even married, married at that point. I think I was with my husband. I mean, I got married later. I got married at 36. I had kids at 38. And so, um, I wasn't even married at that point. You know, it was the, even the dynamic of, my family as in my brothers and my sisters. So it has just gone so much deeper because now it is, it has changed my relationship with my husband. It is, you know, I've literally changed the conversation for my children by changing my life. Yeah. Well, that's what's so fascinating to me is that from age, 
whatever it was. When, how old were you when your father said that? Were you 12, around 12? Oh, no, I was like seven. Okay, seven. Yeah. So from seven to, let's say, 38, yeah. you, you, you basically had all of these burdens or you've, you've had all of these um, toxic anchors, I'll call them, all of these different challenges. And now to see what you're doing now because of the, the work that you've done on yourself is amazing. One of the other things, and I don't know who's listening to this right now, but um, it made me really think about this. You, you journaled when you were in high school. And I'm thinking about girls and boys today growing up in a pandemic, and it's a crazy time. And I think a lot of times self-confidence, self-esteem, hey, it's, it's what you share on your social media all the time. And it's the conversation you have every single day with not only kids, but, but men and women alike. I know you share with a lot of women, but guys, check this out. This is when Jenny's in ninth grade. She's a freshman in high school. And you know what's cool, Jenny, is you're sharing your story, but everyone's thinking about their story as a freshman, right? So when you read that and she's like, check this out. And if you have kids, you understand, or maybe it's you. I'm so unhappy. I came home from school because I'm depressed. Courtney, my best friend's being a bitch. The guy I love, uh, love looks someone else like someone else. And I hate school. I hate everyone. I feel like no one likes me and I want to switch schools. There are these older boys who call me, butt, as in, butt ugly, everyone thinks I'm ugly. I feel like I can't be myself. I can't express my opinion to anyone because when I do, people make fun of me. All anyone does is drink and smoke weed on the weekends. And I hate it, but I do it to fit in. I've never done drugs. And last weekend, someone gave me a sugar cube and I took it. I tripped out. Imagine me, a ninth grader doing acid. I can't believe myself and hate myself for doing it. I hate myself anyway and everything about me. I'm ugly and stupid. Why does it have to be like this? Sometimes I feel like I'm never going to stop crying. God. Ugh. Dang. That's a gut punch. <laughs> That's another one. I'm like, I don't know why I'm sharing all the ones that made me cry because I'm crying again. But here's why. This is real. I can't tell you the number of conversations I've had with parents during the pandemic with their son or daughter smoking weed, drinking too much. All of these things we're talking about, this is real talk. This is real talk today, folks. This is happening. And if you don't, this is a journal entry from Jenny. Okay, Yeah, Jenny, Jenny Schatzel, the one you probably follow on social media. Yeah, that was her. And the reason why she is today is because of all that stuff that happened. But Jenny, man, I, again, I read that. I'm like, wow. Wow, like I don't know anything to share on that because I'm just I'm I'm speechless. That doesn't happen very much. <laughs> <laughs> you and I both. Uh, gosh, when you read that, it just it is. It's like oh, and it takes again takes me back there. Ninth yeah. grade was a super hard year for me, and um, <sighs> yeah, yeah. It's you know I will say, high school was probably it was difficult especially ninth and tenth grade I remember that very specifically and just and you think like even yeah you just think like oh I, you know you, you do as parents of course I have three-year-olds but I you know you tell your parents like you don't have to do things to fit in and but it's the reality even you reading that brings me right back there it's the reality of it and it is where I was um let me ask you this if yeah. you if you were speaking to a freshman today someone that's in Jenny Shassel's shoes today what would you tell that young girl or middle school, because middle school, like McKenna is a seventh grader. Middle school, I, I can't think of a worse time, you know, more impressionable time than middle school. Like, yeah. you're just in a weird, weird place in life. But what would you say to a young girl from seventh to 10th grade these days who feels and the even, same? You know, what I kind of said, said in the beginning is, I mean, Todd, think about, think about how awkward like we were, right? In junior high and high school. And like, you already were insecure and awkward. And like, you heard you didn't get invited to this party. Now kids have to yeah. literally see it on social media, yep. right? And they're seeing everybody's highlight reel. That's actually why it's very important to me to keep things very real and very raw. And what I would say to kids, because again, this is another quote, probably in my junior or senior year that somebody said to me and it stuck with me and it said, if people don't like you for who you are, it's their loss. Mm. 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 You know, and just, I will say it is, I believe it's so important for parents to be having these sit down, open conversations with their kids. Truth, truth, wow, wow. Well, I wanna fast forward because you made me laugh and smile big time throughout the book as well, not just get emotional. Because you talk about a client of yours who I used to love when I was a kid, Kathy Ireland. Yes, Kathy, Kathy Ireland was a client of yours? Okay, can I sidebar this really quick? Yes. Kathy Ireland came to my wedding. Yes. And 
my cousins who are <laughs> 10 years older than I am. They are grown adults with college kids. My two co- male cousins oh. were literally in their forties when I got married are like chasing her. I had to send her an email after my wedding and apologize. Oh. <laughs> my, my cousins from Minnesota were like beside themselves that they were in the same room as Kathy. I like, it was so embarrassing. Yes. So yeah. Kathy, I, I was, um, we're still good friends. That's awesome. She's amazing. Um, yes, she, so, and she was another person who was very influential in my life and you know, the beauty, and I know you're a very religious man. Um, Kathy Ireland is very religious and a, the beauty with her is she just, she is to her core is just the most kind, beautiful. I mean, she is Christian woman and she didn't like press her values on me. Like, you know, you need to do this. And you, she very subtly, like one day she, she gave me a Bible with my name inscribed on it in it. And then this beautiful message. And she, you know, here I am training her showing up at five in the morning, reeking of alcohol from the night before, thinking I'm <laughs> totally getting away with it. Right. And she knew, she's not, you know, she's not an idiot. She knew. And she's like, you know, we became friends. And so it wasn't this like judgmental, you need to get your life together. It was this subtle, like, I believe in you. Yeah. And I know that you're struggling and I know that you're made for more. Mm. So I'm just going to like, you know, subtly kind of help you. And, and she yeah. did in the most beautiful way. And so we actually, not only did we train together and then down the line, we started doing like Bible study and she just had this very non-judgmental, beautiful way of stepping into my life in this kind of spiritual way that I wasn't expecting either. Yeah. I bring that up because I can feel that with how you wrote about her that I call them sometimes God sends messengers to your life just at the right time and says things that you need to hear um, because you share about, you know, she, she gave you a gifted you a Bible and you shared what she shared in there. But I think the most important thing that I liked um, that you shared based on her writing was that your past does not have to be your life sentence. And I was uh, like, wow, another wow statement. When you shared your past does not have to be your life sentence. Um, And it was because of that relationship with Kathy, I could tell that you came to the conclusion of, all of these things for so many years, that was no longer going to be your life sentence, that you were destined for greater things. Is that a, cor- a, a correct uh, conclusion? We actually I almost named the book for a long time. It would, the book was named Your Past Is Not Your Life Sentence. No and way. It, yeah. And then we changed it to Breaking the Cycle, which is because it's truly the action that we're, I'm trying to get people to take. But yes, it was very much so. And, you know, and again, I think a lot of people are numbing themselves out or staying on this one road because they feel guilt or shame about their past. And it, it truly is not your life sentence. And the other thing with the Kathy Ireland was my aha moment was, I think a lot of times we think we're getting away with things, right? Like people don't notice and they do because we see people and we see, like, we see when you're struggling, we see that you're drinking too much. We see that you're uncomfortable. And so I think a lot of times we're kind of going through life, like, Oh, I'm getting away with this. And we're not. And so, like you said, she was definitely sent to me, like, just so you know, I see this. (laughs) Well, do me a favor. Next time you train Kathy Ireland, I want you to give her some extra arms and say, hey, Kathy, this is called the arm farm. And this is for my friend Todd Durkin down in San Diego. He was a super fan like 50 years ago. (laughs) I had no, like 20 years ago, whatever that was. Done. You you and my cousins. Done. (laughs) Yeah. Seriously. For anybody who is... Anybody who is a super fan, I will tell you, she is one of the greatest women on earth. She is so humble. She is so kind. She's amazing. I could tell. That is awesome. Awesome. Hey, fast forward to today. Uh, What does life look like for Jenny Schatzel today? You're a mom, you're a wife, you're you're writing, you're speaking. What is it? What does life look like today for you? What's a typical day like? Um, Well, so actually we're moving this weekend into our forever home. So Mm. it's been very exciting. Congratulations. Uh, Uh, but it's, you know, it's honestly before the pandemic, I had a whole speaking career that was booked. And Mm -hmm. so that was kind of the next stage is we're, you know, doing this whole, the book and speaking tours. And so, you know, you know, with COVID and the pandemic, we've had to adjust, we've had to adapt. And so, um, it really is my day is I teach a couple classes a day. Um, I'm working on online programs that are going to be an extension from the book to help people in Santa Barbara, obviously, but outside of Santa Barbara, you know, my goal is to 
reach a million women worldwide and mm. help them break the cycle and help them change a conversation mm. and help mm. them feel good about themselves. Mm. And that truly really is the goal. So mm. I'm, I'm working on taking this to the next level, which it, it is programs that are, that are going to give tools and tips and daily mindsets that are going to help us to do all that. Wow. Folks, make sure right here, I'm going to say, as you're listening in, make sure you share this uh, message today, this podcast episode today. Uh, it'll help Jenny fulfill her purpose and mission to reach a million people. I do believe that with who the all you fire breathing dragons that the impact show reaches that we all know people who could be positively impacted based on the messages and jenny schatzel's programs and messages needs to be heard by more people specifically more women uh who jenny can serve so uh awesome awesome stuff uh and i know a million you're, you're gonna reach that in the next couple of years <laughs> i love that when when you when you think about all the lessons if you could share maybe two or three lessons from everything, when you sit in your new forever home here in the next month or two, and you're thinking about, you know, you're, you're still, you're still a young woman. Uh, what are some lessons that you would share kind of macro today that anyone can, uh, can learn from? Well, I think, you know, this one, Todd, I, I think we have to take risks and we have to go for it. Mm. You, you said it in the beginning. And when you read the book too, you have to invest in yourself. You know, I always say the longest relationship you're ever going to have is the one that you have with yourself. Mm. So it's not selfish. It's mm. actually your responsibility to invest in it, to take care of it. And so, I mean, even, you know, we're moving into a house that, and I'm just going to be honest, because again, I'm real and I'm wrong. It is so far outside our budget. I mean, we mm. have, we're taking the risk though. It's going to be our forever home. And I believe like it work, we're going to work out. It's going to work out. Yeah. Right. And it's a risk. And it's just like the gym. When we opened the gym, I literally gave all the money in my account, which was not a lot, but I, I went, I just had to go all in. And so I really believe that we, and by taking risk, I believe we take risks because we believe in ourselves and mm. that's where it comes from. This is the whole like self-love movement. It's us investing in us. If I didn't invest in myself, I would have never had this change with you. And so, you know, take the risk, invest in yourself. And truly, if we want to change the conversation for other people, we have to change it for ourselves first. Mm. So good. So good. Well, if you were to see my book right here, Jenny, it is underlined, highlighted. It's got, I mean, it is like, it is, it is actually uh, really looks like it's been read for like a month and it's only been a couple of days, but um, I actually wrote down a few lessons that I extracted myself, wrote them down. One was how to say no. You, uh. you talk about how to say no um, quite a bit. Uh, I wrote down the importance of doing the work. So many times you talk about doing the work and folks, <laughs> I, I want to say if you have issues, but we all have issues. We all have issues. Everyone's got issues, but you know what? It's really easy to cast out judgment on the people like they got issues and not look on the inside to change your own issues that you have with yourself. And Jenny, you share that. And that was my thing is like, you know, importance of doing the work on yourself. Like what's holding you back? What's holding you up? You talk about quite a bit. Uh, in so many words, is surrounding yourself with the right people, not only at the mentorship, but with your partner uh, in business, uh, your husband, your kids, the people, Kathy, your mentors, all of the people who are in your life. Um, and also something that was, uh, I don't want to glance over this, the importance of your, even your morning routine. And you share, it's not like so formal, but like your journaling and meditation that really sets and recalibrates every single day. Those are some of the things I pulled out of, uh, of reading of like life lessons that can be applied to anybody. Oh, I love that. Those are excellent ones. Uh, really. And I will say very quickly, you know, just to touch on all of them real quick is the most saying no was such an important lesson in my life. And especially when we first started business, I want, I thought if I gave away business, so yeah, you can come take a class. Yeah. Here's a meal plan. Yeah. Here's this. And I was giving away my business because I thought, right. Oh, if I just, gave it away and people did, did it, then they'd love it and then they'd pay for it. And what I realized is the more free stuff you give away, the more free stuff people want. And so it was a very, uh, yes. And just, you know, saying no, and but again, that came from valuing myself. I had to value myself and the work that I did in order to say, you know what? No, it's not for free, but this is something you're investing in yourself and you're gonna raise the level and your vibration of yourself. Todd, one thing about that I have to say to you, you, 
expect the highest out of people and you feel that from you to your core when you are in mm. your presence even talking right now when you are in your presence this makes me want to cry you hold people to such a high standard that you make you make people you bring people up to that level mm. just by being you and the the work that you do is being you being in a room with you you automatically can't be anybody but your best self Hmm. So thank, thank you for that. You. Thank you. Thanks for that acknowledgement. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's important. And I truly believe, you know, again, a lot of us had heard this. We are the sum of the five people we hang out with. And if you are the smartest, fastest, you know, person in your group, you got to find a new group. And I'm sure mm -hmm. you've said that before. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and your meditation, just before I uh, close down here, your meditation, I think there's a lot of people who want to meditate more. And it's this really large thought of it's got to be this formal process and it's just overwhelming. Just talk about for a moment, you take about five minutes you share to meditate most mornings of the week. What does that look like for you? And this is another thing. This is part of what I do is I think we make things too big and too hard and we set ourselves up for failure, right? Mm -hmm. Like we can't go from zero to a hundred and I'm somebody much like yourself. I actually have a, um, like I'm going a million miles an hour. You know, I've always got just no, <laughs> but so, We're like two kindred spirits. <laughs> we are, we totally are. Um, and so, you know, even <laughs> that whole when I started meditating, I'm like, I can't sit for five minutes, and it's taking all expectations out of it. Mm. And so, it is. It's like I have even free writing. People, I like to, I call it free writing or journaling. Right. People say like, well, what do you, what do you write about? What do you? And I, so many people say I can't journal because of my handwriting or my. And I'm like, no, you got to take it all. I. I literally every morning write one page and it's all the thoughts in my head. I have no mm. topic. I have no, like I could write, I don't know what I want to write about today, mm. but it's no grammar, no punctuation, sloppy, like just, and it's a way to release all my thoughts on the paper in the morning. And then Amen. I literally sit for three to five minutes and I do a little time meditation for five minutes. Sometimes it's awesome. Sometimes I can't concentrate, but it's just, yeah, I'm going to give myself five minutes to that. And, you know, I have a goal every morning. I just had posted this on my Instagram. I have a goal every morning to get up before my kids. That doesn't always happen. Like I'd set up, I started journaling and my little, you know, my little one came in. I'm like, oh, but then I was like, all right, you know? And so I literally had them sit at the table and we all journaled. And so wow. it's like having the plan, but also having this grace with yourself. Like it's not always going to go as planned, but how do you react? How do you adapt? Mm -hmm. How do you move forward? And again, that's what keeps us stuck is because we think if I just missed a day or I didn't do it right, you're not you're doing it right by just doing. Yeah. Yeah. I am just beaming, beaming with happiness and pride for you. I, I just love hearing your life today with your husband, your kids, uh, the people who you work with. I just want to say thank you, Jenny, for what you're doing for so many people. It's amazing. It really is amazing. I know your book is going to change thousands, if not millions of lives, all your speaking, all your social media. It's just incredible. So I say thank you. Well, thank you. And you are a huge part of this. I cannot thank you enough. And I just love you and your whole family mm -hmm. and all your listeners. This is just, you have no, I actually, I was in the gym this morning and I told everybody our story and people were, I mean, everybody started clapping because I said, <laughs> this is such a big deal for me. It's come full circle to be here on your podcast. And it just truly means so much to me. So thank mm -hmm. you. Jenny, if someone wanted to follow you, not only on social, but anything else that you've got going on programs, uh, can you just drop, where can they follow you? What's the best way to, to get more of Jenny Schatzel? Everyone needs more Jenny Schatzel in their lives. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You can find me on Facebook. I'm, I will say I'm mostly on Instagram yep. and I do all my own Instagram. So you message me. It's funny. I was listening to your podcast with Melanie and there's, we had, we have a lot of similarities, but you know, you said like, I check all my DMs, I check, you know, and at times I can be overwhelming, but I do want to connect with people. So mm -hmm. I, I message me, you know, follow me. I, I do love to connect with people in any way I can help. Please reach out. Mm -hmm. Instagram would be the best way to contact me. Interesting question because you serve so many girls and young ladies and, and that, do you have TikTok or Snapchat? Oh my gosh. So funny. So literally, <laughs> You know, I'm like, oh, like I need one more social media thing right. in my life. But literally somebody the other day was like, all right, Shatzel, it's time to get on TikTok. So I think that's going to be the next. I'm just curious because of the number of young people 
that you serve. I know you serve all ages, but a lot of the young gals need to hear your message. And I know a lot of them like McKenna's age, you know, they're on Snapchat and on TikTok and that. And uh, I was just curious, but it, a website as well. What's the best yes. website? And we're actually, yes, we're re- redoing our website, but it's Jenny at Jenny And that the website is up. The new one will be up in a month. So we're very excited about that. We're too. all always under construction, right? Folks, always. We're, always, <laughs> we're all always under construction as Jenny moves into her, her forever home. Jenny, last question. And yeah. then uh, we'll get rolling is uh, this is called the impact show for a reason. It's all about impact and that's legacy. Uh, when you think about impact, what do you think of? I What's think your about, impact? I think about leading by example. Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm, I'm emotional again. Darn it. Jenny, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. This has been one of the most oh, just fulfilling conversations I've had in a long time. I'm so dang proud of you. Um, You're making me I'm so emotional. I had that Melanie uh, months ago was like, you need to reconnect with Jenny Chatzel because she is actually lighting the world on fire. And uh, your name came up and she is doing amazing things. So I can't wait for us to get up to Santa Barbara because that's Melanie's, as you know, her alma mater, UCSB yes. uh, on that. So we're going to get back up there. We're going to see you and uh, everything that you're doing. Um, I can't so wait. Bad. But thank you so much, Jenny. I love you, girl. Thank you. Love you too. Really, thank you so much. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Folks, that was one of the best conversations I've had in a long, long time. I hope you enjoyed it as much as me. You know, you think about 2012, uh, here she is, one of the 50 or so students in the mentorship. I still remember that class or guys like uh, Brian Nunez, Ivan Barrera. I mean, there was, there were some amazing people that I just, they stand, they stood out. And Jenny was one of those people. And um, to see what she's doing now and the impact that she's creating, um, it brings me such pride and joy to see the impact that she's having on so many people follow her, please uh, give her a follow. If you're on Instagram or Facebook, definitely follow her. She's one of the ones you want to have come through your feed, right? Your feed. What are you being fed? If you're on Instagram, Facebook, or social media, you want to be fed the right stuff. And what Jenny Schatzel is putting out into the universe, not just in Santa Barbara, not just in California, but literally worldwide through podcasts like this, she is a woman of impact. Folks, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for what you do. And uh, go go read the book. Pick up the book. Go to Amazon, uh, Breaking the Cycle. Free yourself from the story that's holding you back by Jenny Schatzel. Thank you so much for joining the Todd Durkin Impact Show today. If you have not yet subscribed to the show, uh, you can be guaranteed that every Monday and Thursday, I'm dropping episodes that are going to light your mind, body, and soul up. So make sure you subscribe. Thanks for always giving us a five-star rating and writing us a great review. And uh, keep sharing the great news. Until next time, remember, train hard, eat right, live inspired, and go create impact today.